Last year at Real World Crypto 2017, a colleague of mine at Microsoft Research, Michael Nerick, gave a talk on uh, this uh, young but very promising uh, post-quantum cryptographic scheme called Super Singular Associated Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange, um, or also known as SIDH. Uh, this talk today is a little bit like a continuation of that talk, um, it, but focus especially uh, trying to summarize all our efforts to make not only this uh, a scheme and related schemes uh, ready for the NIST post-quantum competition that began a few weeks ago, but also uh, try to make it as practical as possible. So uh, thank you to, uh, to Melissa. I, I can skip most of the motivation part. Uh, so I can say that we are going to focus in this talk on SIDH and also on a key encapsulation uh, protocol that we recently designed and that we call Psych. But before getting into the technical details, let me just uh, give you a very quick timeline of the development of Isoyne-based crypto. It all began in 1996 when Covinius described the first Isoyne a key exchange scheme. Um, years later, in 2006, after a series of papers by Rostoyev Stobunov, uh, we had a key exchange using ordinary isogenies. Uh, but the problem with all these schemes was that they were terribly expensive. They, they were impractical. Um, it also was found out that they could be broken in quantum sub-exponential time. So that was pretty bad. Uh, but this was um, solved, thankfully, to David Zhao and Luca Di Feo, who look at the problem and propose a key exchange based on super singular isogenies. And that was in 2010, and uh, this is the scheme that we know as uh, SIDH, right? And with SIDH, we get much better performance, and also we solve the problem of security because now the attack complexity it runs in exponential uh, time, right? And, uh, and this is for quantum and also for the classical cases. Now let's uh, stop for a minute uh, this timeline. Uh, let me give you a very quick explanation of how SIDH works, okay? So in the, in the setting of SIDH, what, what we have are elliptic uh, subgroups, and these subgroups map to uh, isogenies, okay? Now a definition that helps us here is what we call a super singular isogeny graph. So in this graph, what we have are, are vertices, Right? And these vertices are uh, elliptic curves, or more precisely, uh, isomorphic classes. And these vertices are connected to each other through edges, and these edges are the, the isogenies, the ones that map one curve to the other one. Right? Now, in this setting, we've, we have a fixed isogeny class right, for all these subgroups. And uh, for security reasons, we need uh, isogenies that have a large degree. Right? Um, another requirement that is important here is that we need uh, these isogenies to have a smooth degree. What this means is that if we are in the graph and want to walk through the graph to get to another curve, then we can do it as, as, as small steps at a time, right? So to give you a concrete example, uh, in practice, we instantiate these small steps in the graph using two isogenies and three isogenies. Okay, so with this in mind, let me explain uh, SADH uh, at a very high level. Um, uh, we have a starting super singular curve, E dot. And then Alice, what needs to establish is an elliptic curve subgroup, in this case using a secret SA. Um, and this subgroup, that we call it A here, corresponds to an isogeny. With this isogeny, we can map the original curve to another curve that we call EA here. And this is actually E dot modulo the subgroup A that we just defined. Bob, on the other side, does a similar computation to get to EB. Um, and these two new curves are actually public, made public. They are exchanged between the parties, between Alice and Bob. Uh, it turns out that this information is not enough to complete that, uh, a key exchange. We need extra information that I show here in this slide. Uh, we actually need a couple of evaluations on public points uh, using these secret isogenies. Okay, so with this information at hand, then Alice can continue the computation taking the curve EB and using a new subgroup also set up with the uh, secret SA, then we get to a new isogeny that maps EB to a new curve EBA that is actually the curve EB modulo uh, this new subgroup A dash. Bob does this, a similar computation, 
And then what is interesting about these two new curves is that they are isomorphic. Uh, they actually correspond to this curve uh, called here E dot is a modulo the, the original subgroups A comma B. So all these curves are isomorphic, that's great. Then we can use the J invariant of these curves as shared secrets. Okay, so that's for the, for the technical part of, of the SIDH scheme. Now, what is the problem here that, uh, that, that is hard to, to compute? Well, let's uh, look at these super singular uh, curves in the setting, uh, let's call them E1 and E2. They are defined over quadratic extension fields using a large prime P. We have the isogeny uh, uh, that maps E1 to E2. And as I said, the isogeny should, should have a large smooth degree. And then the super singular isogeny problem is the following. Given points PQ and the, and the and the images of those two points, then the hard problem is to compute the morphism, the, the map, the isogeny map, right? The, 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 uh, the here represented by phi. As I said, the best known attacks uh, against this problem uh, run in exponential time. We can see the, the complexities in the slides for the classical and quantum cases, and these are done through uh, a generic law finding algorithms. Now, at the time this was proposed, there were still two problems that remain. On one hand, the existing realizations were still very slow. They ran in the hundreds of milliseconds. And worse than that, they were unprotected against time in such an attack, which is a basic requirement nowadays to have a practical implementation. The second problem is that the SIDH is not secure when keys are, re are reused, so it's only recommended for ephemeral mode, right? So, going back to our timeline, uh, in 2016, we, we took a closer look at SIDH. This was a joint work with Craig Costello and Michael Narek at Microsoft Research, and we pushed harder on the performance issues to make it practical. So we proposed a new parameter set that we call SIDH P751 that targets the 128-bit uh, quantum security level, and also proposed a, ser a series of optimization techniques that push the performance below 60 milliseconds. So that was a, a great improvement. And moreover, the implementation ran in constant time as, as, as we wanted, right? So getting close to practice, uh, to practical use, uh, maybe for some applications still not fast enough, and definitely still uh, having the problem of, uh, of a static keys, right? So in 2017, we continued our efforts pushing hard on the performance issues and uh, also looking at the issue of a static keys, and that's why we designed this key encapsulation protocol that we now call Psyche. And this, the design of Psyche is due to um, Kirk Costello, Luca Di Feo, uh, David Zhao, myself, uh, Michael Nerick, and Joe Srenes. Uh, this is a, uh, Psyche is a CCA secure key encapsulation uh, that uses a variant of the Hof Haines Hoffelman Kills transform to transform a CPA secure public key encryption to a CCA secure uh, encapsula key encapsulation mechanism, or CAM, right? And this transform is secure for both the classical and quantum random oracle models, which is good. Uh, another observation is that there are not, we observe there is no performance loss when switching from SIDH to PSYCH. Uh, this is spe specifically in the case where offline is computed, uh, sorry, the key generation is computed offline. And moreover, we also propose additional parameter sets, uh, matching the brute force security of AES-128, 192, and 256. Uh, in the, uh, the table in the slide show the details. Uh, the name for each parameter set is psych concatenated to, uh, to the bit length of the underlying prime. So we have psych P503, P751, P964, and so on, and they correspond to the NIST security levels 1, 3, and 5, uh, which as defined in the call for proposals uh, for, for, from NIST. Now, let me give you a very brief explanation of how PSYC works. Uh, uh, first of all, we have a key generation stage. Uh, this can be seen as computed from Bob's side. So uh, first of all, we have to establish a secret SB. And similar to the SIDH setting, that secret is used to uh, establish uh, uh, an elliptic curve subgroup. And with this elliptic curve subgroup, we uh, uh, generate a public key that is called here PKB. 
and this public key is sent to the other party that performs the encapsulation process. This can be seen as computed from uh, Alice's side, uh, and Alice runs uh, an encryption uh, operation, right? Uh, takes a message M, a new secret R, and then does similar computations uh, to the previous uh, operations, the previous processes, uh, establish a, a new uh, a subgroup using this secret R, uh, fixes, a, a, computes a new public key that is called here PKA, and similar to the SID setting, we arrive to a J invariant of the curve, in this case, EAB. Okay, and the shared secret here is the hashing of the message M with this ciphertext. And now, the ciphertext is explicitly uh, detailed here in the arrow um, that you see in the screen that is passed to the other party, back to the other party that runs the decapsulation process. Now, uh, the decapsulation proceeds to do the decryption and also a partial re-encryption. Uh, in, in order to, uh, well, to recover the public key PKA that was sent from the encapsulation party. And uh, this one is compared with the original, the, the, the calculated one is compared to the original one in order to detect any, uh, the, well, in order to make sure that the ciphertext was well formed. All right, if, if it is, uh, that, if it is uh, the case, then we should arrive to the same share key SS that we show here in the slide. Okay, and we instantiate the hash, function, hash functions in our case with C-Shake 256. All right, so that's, those were the details for Psyche. Uh, let me just go through some other additional contributions that we have. Uh, we wrote a, a library that, that we call SIDH. We are at version 3.0 now, and uh, this, this version implements SIDH and Psyche covers two security level and a, contains a, a bunch of implementations, uh, high speed, especially high speed implementations for x64 and now for ARM v8 too. Uh, also, there are no secret branches in the code, no secret memory accesses, so probably we can say that the code is protected against cache timing attacks, um, or probably not anymore, right? As always, the software countermeasures depend on the assumptions made in the hardware, and if the hardware fails, then there is little we can, we can, we can do about it. I still, what, what we can say is that our assembly code, which is a, a very good chunk of the, of the implementation, is not vulnerable to these attacks because there are no branches, right? For the C code part, is, the things are more complicated. Uh, we have to make sure that we use the right countermeasures, uh, but I'll let the uh, Project Zero team explain it later with more details. Um, we will hear about that uh, today, I guess. Um, but let me guess, uh, get to the, to the timings, to the interesting part, to the practical part. We, uh, as I said, we have the implementations of SIDH and Psyche, two security levels. Um, uh, I want to highlight in this table the, the nice numbers that we are obtaining after improving uh, uh, P751, you can see that the numbers for that security level are close to 30 milliseconds, so it's a nice improvement compared to you know, the 60 milliseconds that we had before and even the hundreds of milliseconds that we had a few years ago. So we are steadily improving the performance, which is nice. And especially nice is that the version 503, the security, the parameter set 503 runs in about 10 milliseconds. So, uh, arguably, that makes these schemes practical for many, uh, for many applications out there. We also have timings for ARM64 platforms, and this is uh, a, thanks to an implementation uh, by Matt Campagna. And finally, let me uh, point out that we have, uh, we submitted Psych to the NIST post-quantum competition that uh, had a deadline a few weeks ago. The package can be found in this link. And here is the full psych team, uh, a bunch of people uh, 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 working on theoretical aspects, uh, hardware implementations, software implementations on different platforms. It's a multi-company, multi-university uh, effort, it's a great team to work with. And I want to finish this presentation mentioning that in the last couple of years, we have seen 
a spike in uh, in the interest in in SIDH and related schemes. That that is great. Uh, it, we now see many. Uh, many works out there trying to improve several aspects of super singular isogenies. So, for example, like I mentioned, there are works on faster compression, making the public keys even smaller, which are, by the way, the smallest one among the most popular post quantum uh, candidates out there. We have optimized algorithms also and works on signatures, which is, which is great. And, and I, I want to uh, you know, ask the community to, to, to continue putting effort on making uh, super singular isogenies. Uh, even greater. So thank you for your attention.